there has been a lot of talk about climate change from the other parties. If you weren't paying attention, you might think it was all sorted out. They are, after all, running the government and most of our local councils. But no, the UK's carbon dioxide emissions are still rising by more than 1% a year. How can that be? The answer lies in the yawning gap between the other parties' words and their actions, as highlighted by the Green Standard Report this week. This report, by nine environmental groups, said that none of the Grey parties is yet providing consistent leadership on the environment, and that all three must close the gap between rhetoric and delivery. I couldn't have put it better myself. So, what are they doing? What about Labour? Well, we can see the government's environment policies falling down around their ears on a weekly basis. By making a farce of the Low Carbon Buildings programme, they are denying us the chance to use solar and wind power in our homes. By mismanaging home information packs, they are denying us the information about energy costs we need when choosing where to live. By pushing through airport expansion, they are denying the impact of more flights on Britain's contribution to climate chaos. They talk about climate change internationally, but at home they do nothing about it. The Tories are just as bad. Their handful of well-meaning souls working on the Quality of Life Review are already being shouted down by the sinister and cynical neoliberals in the rest of the Shadow Cabinet. And they are being undermined by Tories on the ground who are still backing cars, airports and nuclear power while running down public transport and green energy. The Tories' new proposals released yesterday are a big disappointment. There's some nice rhetoric, but in terms of actual policies, there is nothing radical or effective there. And they've already been watered down. Gummer and Goldsmith have fallen at the first hurdle and backed off on airport expansion. The energy-saving incentives in the report are meek and certainly not the radical investment we need. It's no surprise when they have the likes of John Redwood across the table, pushing for growth above everything and tax cuts for the most wealthy, paid for by the rest of us through green taxes. The Lib Dems, bless them, they have their plan for a zero carbon Britain, but their policies simply aren't capable of achieving this. And despite all their talk, they don't deliver when they get into power either. Right here in Liverpool, we have a Lib Dem council that could have made Liverpool the greenest city in the north, if not in the whole of the UK. But after nine years in power, they haven't even got a green travel plan for their own council workers. They haven't managed to lift the city out of the bottom ten councils in the UK's Recycling League. They are making a virtue of opposing road pricing for the city. And they can hardly contain their enthusiasm for the airport. The Lib Dem Council leader, Warren Bradley, has been encouraging people to get off the train and support the London shuttle planes. His so-called regeneration strategy, which depends on the airport, is no strategy at all. How will the airport be able to support the city in the future? We need more long-term thinking for Liverpool and for the whole country. And Greens can provide that long-term thinking. The Green Party's policies are guaranteed to work. Our policies are costed, and they are carbon costed. They are focused on the long term, based on scientific evidence, and inspired by what has worked elsewhere. They are not short-term quick fixes, not half-hearted and set up to fail, and not designed for the benefit of friends in big business. There is another problem infecting the other parties. They want you to think climate change is your fault. They make it hard for you to be green, and then they make you feel guilty about it. They give you no help to make changes and then penalise you when you don't revolutionise your life. This week, charities including Help the Aged and Friends of the Earth revealed that a green gulf has emerged between people on low incomes and the better off. They are right. The way things are now, being green can be a bit of a luxury. The poorest are being left out of the drive to save the planet. One low income mother told them, it is basically taking the country by storm, and I do feel a pang of guilt at not being able to do everything. The government is letting people like her down by making being green difficult and expensive when it should be easy and within everyone's reach. Thanks to Labour's failure to support public transport, if you want to leave your car at home and catch the bus to work, you're likely to have quite a struggle. The deregulated buses are ruled by profit, not the need to provide a service. 
Your local bus is likely to be infrequent and expensive, not convenient and cheap. Gordon Brown leaves you sitting in a traffic jam while making you feel like it's your fault. His green taxes on cars are designed to raise money without providing you with an alternative. That's not fair, but it's the way Gordon Brown thinks things should be. Gordon Brown thinks you should solve climate change by changing your light bulbs. We think you should solve climate change by changing your government. <laughs> a green Britain would be different. A place where being green isn't hard, isn't something you do out of goodwill or when you have lots of time and money, but what is normal, easy and best value for you. Sacrifice and guilt are words too often linked with tackling climate change. The other parties want you to believe that reducing emissions means reducing your quality of life. Maybe their way it does, but they have got it the wrong way round. They think that the status quo is the way things are meant to be, that this is as good as it gets. We don't agree. For the Green Party, tackling climate change means creating a fairer, happier, healthier, more enjoyable life, where there are warm, dry and safe homes for all, with local shops and services nearby, where we know others in our community and we all have a real say in the decisions that affect us where no one is working 50-hour weeks with 20-minute lunch breaks, but we all get home with plenty of time to spend with our children before they go to bed.